Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, you know, today, uh, it's really all about every great character uh, needs a little bit of balance. You know, they need a little push and pull between their strengths and their flaws. And I'm not talking about flaws like uh, linoleum or wood. I'm talking about the things that make us less than uh, great. But those flaws are what make us more than human. It's the duality that makes them feel real and relatable as well. Strengths and weaknesses working together. But how does a writer balance the positive and negative traits in their characters to make them not only compelling, but unforgettable? And that's why today we are going over strengths and flaws, the duality that makes characters compelling. Eh, but Thomas, why is that important? That's a good question. Think about the most memorable characters you've seen on screen or read in those pages, right? Chances are they probably were not perfect. And if they were, you know, we were like, yeah, this is a Gary Stu or a Mary Sue. And there's nothing compelling about them. It's when we feel or can sense empathy for our characters because they are uh, flawed. They have their strengths. They, they are capable. This is, there's a really great uh, uh, chart that uh, Brandon Sanderson uses where it's like likable, capable, and uh, there was one other one, but uh, ultimately there's three. And it's you got to kind of like move, like let's say it's zero to ten on each each line, right? So likability is like a two. Well, if it's a two, that means they should be capable. You know, they should be highly capable then or, or more capable than not. Um you know, so you should move things around. And that's the thing, same thing with flaws and strengths. You know, uh, having too many strengths is uninteresting. Having too many flaws, we can't root for them, right? We, we don't see that they're capable. So, uh, you know, in reality, it's the contrast between the strengths and weaknesses that gives the characters their depth. Without this balance, characters can feel too predictable or too one-dimensional. And I also want you to keep in mind that strengths make a character admirable uh, or effective, while flaws make a character relatable or vulnerable. Um, but anyway, so, so strengths show us what a character is capable of, right? They might be brave, smart, or resourceful, uh, but the flaws are sort of the opposite, right? They reveal who a character can uh, is and what they could potentially be, which is the reverse of those flaws. Um for example, a character might be brave, but reckless or smart, but manipulative. Hmm? Uh, anyway. And as we know, all story, right? Because the narrative is made of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is uh, how, how it unfolds through the emotional experience of the characters. And part of story is tension and conflict and resolution. So the tension between these two traits is what creates the internal conflict. And it's the conflict that keeps your readers engaged because that is the story unfolding. That's the interesting part. Will they, won't they, can they, can't they, right? So, but ultimately, what are character flaws and strengths? If you don't know uh, uh, exactly what I'm talking about, Flaws are the imperfections that make your characters relatable. They're the things that get them into trouble, create internal conflict, or hinder their goals. A fear of public speaking, a, ten a tendency to procrastinate, procrastinate, and a stubborn refusal to admit they're wrong. I've, I've, I've been there with people. Uh, strengths might uh, be the exact opposite, you know, the qualities that make their character capable of overwhelming, uh, of overcoming challenges. Uh, they're, these are their skills, their talents, their positive traits, their drive for action, et cetera, et cetera. This is why we love Indiana Jones. We know he has flaws. We know. But he's also highly capable in very specific areas, which makes him interesting. We know there's a chance he might fail, but we also know he'll persevere, right? He has a high level of perseverance. Um, you know, but a strength might a strength might be uh, exceptional intelligence, extra extra extraordinary physical ability, and or strong moral compass, or maybe even natural charisma, like me. You know. <laughs> okay, uh, but the interplay between these flaws and strengths helps to create the compelling character themselves. So strengths by themselves or flaws by themselves aren't necessarily 
going to be the compelling aspect. It isn't interesting for someone to just be super smart, but have no flaws, right? Or to only have flaws, but not have the capability to do something. Um, but ultimately, you know, the reason you're looking at it, the interplay is because a character with a fear of public speaking might also overcome this fear by developing excellent writing skills, which would be their strength. Right? Um, but the balance is key. Now, I'd like to kind of uh, go through and I uh, go through, do a walkthrough. What do you say? What do you say? So first we have to identify uh, the strengths first, right? Um, now, before I even get into it, I'll be the first one to say that I'm not a fan of lists. I'm not really about like, hey, let's uh, let's map out ideas first. Let's be like, uh, maybe they're strong. Maybe they're smart. Maybe they're uh, they're really good at tennis, right? Me, I like to build a character, or at least building a character should come through for me. I, I like this. Uh, building the character should come through designing and laying out their character arcs within a plot uh, or within an outline. And while writing my zero draft after I have the outline, this is where I'll discover their voice through their dialogue, their what they say, don't say, what they do, what they don't do, which will add and change the character as I find their true and natural voices through their choices. Um, you know, what feels more natural than making this choice or that choice. Then I start discovering their positions. And through all this, I really discover who they are. And then their flaws and strengths naturally come through this process. But sometimes you write out some characters, like secondary characters, etc., and you realize they don't have flaws or strengths. They're sort of just like playing a role. And that's when what we're about to go over really takes effect this is the work this is going all right how do i work this you could also utilize what i'm about to show you um with characters you can identify flaws and strengths with the characters that you have developed through the process but you want to add a little something something you know all right i'm gonna do it i'm gonna drink oh yeah give me that diet cherry pepsi sponsorship <laughs> all right uh so i just want to i want you to also understand that this walkthrough is more of an example of what to do once you've discovered a flaw or strength within the character or again if you are noticing that there is neither within the character but again i haven't done the work this is going to be a real-time example so let's assume i did the work <laughs> but um and let's say on the page, I uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do real time. I'm gonna bring up the screen in a second, but I just want to kind of set the scene, you know. Um, but assume assuming I did the work, uh, and I have a character, and and they're a warrior, and let's say their strength is uh, they're strong willed, they're brave, and they're natural leaders, right? Um, you know, which is pretty common, so that should make it easy. Because don't we always want our protagonist to be strong, strong willed? brave and a natural leader don't we always uh and sure yeah all these are great qualities but without flaws our warrior would feel invincible this means we have to add some flaws to balance things out but more importantly i want flaws so i can create tension conflict and allow the character to be challenged so they need to make choices that's the whole point of act one by the way is to introduce these weaknesses and these strengths so in Act 2, you could escalate things by challenging not only their positions, but their strengths and challenging their flaws. Because that becomes the interesting story. That What, what are they doing to make choices for these, these challenges, right? But anyway, all right, so let's do this. Let's uh, share the screen, Mr. Thomas J. Belezza. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right. So first and foremost, uh, let's say let's say he uh, the character is the warrior is strong willed, brave and a natural leader. Great. He's on their strengths. All right. Laws. Marble. No, just kidding. <laughs> Marble. Wood. <laughs> All right. So now the idea is that we have to layer in the flaws. So 
if our warrior is indeed brave, maybe they are, I think, reckless. I hope I spelled that right. I feel like I did. Reckless. There it is. Reckless. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but I had to Google play the. I like. I like. I have to hear things sometimes because my dyslexia, right? So, uh, okay, so maybe they're reckless. Um, you know, maybe maybe because he's uh, he's a natural leader or whatever. He's a bit uh, a bit controlling and potentially uh, distant from others, just because you know strong will they just they just they keep themselves right but the reason we do this is because flaws are great for helping to make this character right because knowing that they're reckless you can relate to that uh the, the being distant from others that might make sense because they just don't want to get close enough to say they're soldiers that they're leading because uh you know, they they know they're gonna die and that's an interesting that's an interesting dichotomy for the character it's right? so, a um, but, uh, what happens here is because they have these just three flaws that are kind of opposing their strengths, uh, not only, uh, is the, the character not, uh, perfect anymore, but there's now room for growth, right? And, uh, flaws create an opportunity for you to not only show a character's arc, uh, you know, for example, a strong, brave leader could change into a weak because they get wounded. Uh, they become, they could become, um, let me get, boop. they could become afraid uh, and lose their confidence, right? And uh, and uh, and ultimately be unable to lead. So that's an interesting way you can go with just knowing. And again, normally I don't write out, you know, that they're brave, strong, and, and leaders. Um, it's through the discovery of my outline, my zero draft, you know, maybe even my first draft will find their voice, uh, solidify their voice. And then I like to go back. And when I, before I do my second draft, what I'm doing with my read through, uh, because the first draft is the zero first and second draft are for me. I don't let anyone really see those. Right. I don't let alpha readers see, I, I'll let them see the second draft after I'm done. But, um, the second draft is where I'm actually doing the work, where I'm going in and I'm saying to myself, am I challenging these characters? Uh, do they seem too perfect? You know, things like that. And like, how do I adjust the scene to really showcase these challenges and personalities? Um, but the, the idea is that you want to show growth also. And when it comes to pacing, you don't want their growth to be something that's... Uh, I kind of like to look at it where, uh, let's say there's 20 steps from, from where I start to where I change. And by the way, that change could be good or bad, right? It, it, it's just a consequence. So where they start in the story and where they could end up doubling down, meaning like by the end of the story, they're just, they, because remember when you challenge a position or challenge a character, they're either going to change completely somewhat or not at all. If they don't change, they usually double down. It means that they become more secure and confident in their position, right? Same thing with a floor. If somebody is like arrogant uh, and they don't change their arrogance, but they are, they step into their arrogance. That would be an example of not changing at all, but doubling down, right? Um, so I look at these 20 steps and I say, if I, in one chapter, I feel they grew five steps. That's a lot for a chapter. I like to grow one to maybe two or three steps. Three is really pushing it. Something big has to happen. Something something big has to happen. For a character to go from one to 20 in a chapter is unrealistic, right? So you could use that kind of mentality and going, how am I going to slowly change them? Well, you do this by challenging their flaws and giving them opportunities to make choices and those choices will lead to complete change somewhat or not at all and then you're saying thomas but a complete change wouldn't that be a 20 not necessarily the complete change means that they go from say they like the jets and to, uh and their complete change is that they realize 
there is something wrong with the Jets as a football team, and maybe they shouldn't really put all their time into it. So they're not necessarily becoming a fan of another team yet, but maybe by the end, the 20th step might be that they become the fans of the Giants. They are converted into a Giants fan. But that end of the chapter, that complete change might be that their original position is they're confident that the Jets are the best team and they're the team that they will die rooting for because it's family tradition. So the complete change would just be a break in that uh, uh, perspective, which would be that maybe they aren't the best team and maybe I am uh, rooting for the wrong team, right? So now you open the door for the gradual change. And now the argument, right, for them, the, the challenge is, they have to find their connection to the Jets again. They have to be like, no, what am I doing? Like, the Jets are the best team ever, right? And they, they're not, the, obviously, the Giants and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I'm just saying, starting internet fights. Okay. Um, but ultimately, you want to see them find a position and, and stand by. And by the 20th step, they might actually come back and be like, you know what? The Jets are the best team, and I, I'm glad I root for them. And now they're doubling down, right? So there are changes within the steps. And then there's the, we're leading to the 20th step. And on that 20th step, they're either going to completely change their position, uh, or, or, as in like the, they change teams. Um, they're going to somewhat change where they're like, you know what? I, I, I still like the Jets, but I, I, I'll root for whatever team is, you know, that I, I feel confident. Like I'm okay being confident with another team. Um, the Jets will always be my family team, though, you know, and then maybe they don't change at all, which is the Jets are forever the team. So that's that's the advantage of challenging things and having a list like this and being able to say, all right, well, if the warrior is this, how do I go through those steps to change them? I know I sidetracked a little bit. I apologize. Uh, let's get let's get back to it. So the balance. Let's let's move on to the balance of duality. Hey, look, there I am. All right. Um, okay. So eh, let's say, so we have to imagine the scenario where uh, the warrior is leading his troops into battle. Uh, his bravery and leadership uh, push him to charge ahead, but his recklessness means he doesn't wait for backup. This decision costs him a victory and strains his relationship with his troops. What might that look like? All right, let's do that. Let's take this off the screen so you can see the whole screen. So let's work that out. Um, let's see. Since uh, since he's a uh, distant, distant and uh, potentially reckless, uh, you know, a bit controlling. Let's call him Richard because he's a dick. All right, Richard. What is Richard doing? Let's just get right into it. Richard charged ahead, breaking beyond uh beyond the front lines of his riled riled troops did i spell riled correctly riled riled oh rallied yeah i'm sorry my uh accent Richard charged ahead, breaking beyond the front lines of his rallied troops. Oh, I like it. Now let's let's. What I like to do, by the way, when I write, is I like each sentence to sort of lead into a sentence. So now that I mentioned troops, what are the troops doing? Well, they uh, let's say they trailed behind him in, and we got to create some sort of uh, visceral element to it. So how did they trail behind him? Uh, let's say a fiery fiery courage and uh now we kind of have to lead into the next part of it so i want i want to get close i want to represent uh that we're almost to the group like the soldiers so they uh they trailed can i spell trial the trail <laughs> trail i think i oh yeah trailed yeah okay trail trailed all right all right, so where was I? Oh, they trailed behind him in a fiery courage and then uh, reaching the gathering of their enemy, Enema, <laughs> rushing from the opposite side. Anyone say Braveheart? Okay, anyway. 
Now, because I mentioned uh, the troops within the POV of Richard, I do want to use Richard's name again, because if I say he, it might be confusing. So for clarity, we just say Richard stumbled at the heavy impact of the outnumbering mass pushing through his smaller army. Now, um, you, you might think uh, I could do this, though. I actually could do this because it would be a new movement. And this is also uh, because he's uh, he's reckless. So that was the recklessness is that, uh, you know, he just ran right into it. So um, I could actually do this now. He stumbled at the OK. Uh, or I could say stumbling. Into the. Heavy impact of the outnumber. Nah, let's just keep it the way. He stumbled at the heavy impact of the outnumbering mass pushing through uh, a mass of warriors pushing through his smaller army. Okay. Uh, so now, how does that influence him, right? So now we want to go internally. So I would be like, you know, uh, let's talk about, let's get a little uh, flowery here. His soul shattered in the gates of his choice. The lives falling to his side in the death of blood and mud. What? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and now we, we still want to stay inside his head, or at least I would like to. So at the cost of his bravery, what small victory would have been had? Huh? All right. So now let's confirm that this is still uh, Richard's uh, mentality, like his POV. So, you know, let's say Richard again and looked uh, over the endless raging screams of more soldiers covering over the far hill. Now, first of all, as I write, train of thought i realized i don't want looked because that's a filter word so we could just actually go this do, 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 do. the endless rage screams of just covered okay the endless rage right this rage uh. Rage of screams covered over the far hill with more soldiers. Oh, yeah, there we go. I like that. Okay. Okay, fumbling Richard. Oh, fumbling. Actually, uh, let's let's make his words have some sort of uh, uh, texture to it. So, fumbling to find his words, right? Uh, <clears throat> fumbling, stuttered, <sighs> stuttered out the call to retreat. Before he pulled close, pulled, pulled the closest man with him to leave. Uh, his voice swung over the crowd, calling at it, calling, calling for his men to follow, uh, follow back. All right, so there we go. All right. Uh, let me take a quick sip. We could put me back on the screen so I'm not uh, potentially taking up space. Do we want that or do we want that? Hey, I'm tiny over there. Though. All right. I'm so tiny. So what's going on here? All right, so the warrior is strong-willed, brave, and natural. So that makes them reckless, a bit controlling, and potentially distant from others. So Richard charged ahead, breaking beyond the front lines of his rallied troops. This is show, sometimes tell, where 
uh, we are showing Richard being a strong-willed, brave, and natural leader. He's the first in, last out, right? Well, in this case, he's the first in. Uh, they, his troops, they trailed behind him in a fiery courage, reaching the gathering of their enemy, rushing from the opposite side. So now we got a good understanding of the field and what's going on. They're coming from both sides. He stumbled at the heavy impact of the outnumbering mass of warriors. Uh, he stumbled at the heavy impact of the outnumbering masses. Mass filled with warriors pushing through through his smaller army. His soul shattered in the chaos of his choice. Right, the lives falling. To so now he's like content. He's processing the way I wrote it. Is he's processing, uh, you know what's going on, right? So he's he's like, oh, I know I'm brave, and maybe my bravery just. Qu what did my bravery cost us? I thought we could win this battle. I did not un realize they had more. I'm a bit little reckless here. So, uh, you know, he's like, he's like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. So, by understanding his strengths and flaws, I was able to sort of like kind of. Uh, move the elements around a bit you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying all right let's try something else boom realizing there are no flaws or strengths so <clears throat> what i'm saying is uh you know if if i've come this far in the writing process right and i notice that uh, the character has either no flaws strengths or uh like they don't have flaws or strengths but maybe they don't have maybe they don't have any maybe they, they have no strengths or flaws uh i really need to reevaluate uh the character a little bit and uh, there are two ways i'd like to uh, i do that either a i looked at what's on the page and i determined what would be an interesting aspect uh for the character and or b I'll, uh, I'll figure out what would help add contrast to both the character and the world they're within okay but um let's take what i wrote and uh let's let's kind of let's uh let's take what i wrote you know move this on the screen and kind of sort of like just bring it to the bare bones the bare bones which is ultimately that richard led his troops his tropes, his troops standing side by side with them against the opposing armies, right? I can't spell. Spelling is without me. Anyway, reaching the bulk of the battle in the center of the field, right? Because that's what happened, right? Uh, the two armies fought until Richard and his men came out victorious. All right. And uh, maybe the battle took a lot out of him and his men, but, but in the end, uh, they had won together. All right. So a couple things. Uh, first is uh, I obviously changed that they, I'm like, well, let's, because uh, ultimately he had, they have to win. Right. So in a sense, um, in the original, they were going to retreat, but uh, we're going to, uh, I want to sort of like, uh, explore that. Right. I want to see what I can do with that to make it a little, uh, different and a little interesting. Right. So, um, if we read this again, it says Richard led his troops standing side by side with them against the opposing armies, reaching the bulk of the battle in the center of the field. The two armies fought until Richard and his men came out victorious the battle took a lot out of him and his men but in the end they had won now why did i do it like this i have seen many a passages written like this where ultimately um ultimately it's just plot this is an example of things are happening but nothing is happening on the page right so uh, yes, I can see that things are happening, but nothing is really happening, right? And that's because we're not seeing choices. We're not seeing immersion. We're not seeing experience. We're not seeing Richard, in this case, uh, experiencing the events through their emotional experience of anything, right? So 
But this is just what happens. Richard led his troops. They were standing by hand by hand. We don't. Uh, there's no strength of floor there. Reaching the bulk of the army and sending the two armies forward until Richard and his men overcame the victory. There's no strength of floor there. The battle took a lot out of him and his men, but in the end, they had one together. So, as you can see, it's very bland, right? And if you're looking at a passage like this or an experience on your page, the reason nothing is happening is because, again, we are not experiencing this money moment through the emotional experience of Richard or other characters. They're not being challenged. They're not showcasing their strengths or flaws, which usually comes through their behavior and their choices, and then the consequences to those behaviors and choices. So we, we need to kind of play with this, all right? And the reason I want to play with it is because it's a lot, it lost its luster, right? I mean, even just as a first run, this this part right here has a little bit more going on with it. There's something happening. We're seeing choices. We're seeing consequences to those choices. We're seeing behavior. We're seeing internalized processing, right? Or I should just say processing, all right? Plus, uh, like I said, there's no challenges. There's no, there's no choices being here. It's just, to me, to me, this is what expositional plot looks like it's just this is what happens right uh let's see let's see now um originally we had richard as brave so i'm i'm gonna change it up i'm gonna focus on uh maybe a flaw first so let's say uh richard is a coward who acts brave for his men okay so how do we kind of uh write this out so i'm going to take this plot driven moment and turn it into a character driven moment that is ultimately defined by their flaws and strengths in this case their cowardice their cowardice uh but they act brave so let's say let's start off with richard again richard okay we know he led the charge into battle so that's a choice right um but the real choice is that we need to go inside. So we want his, we want to know that his mind, uh, his mind conscious of the distance between him and the coming soldiers ahead. <laughs> ahead. Um, let's let's do a little bit more immersive processing of his uh, soul. So he has. Uh, hesitated at the edge of the rushing line which now how far is that line so now only feet from the battlefield oh yeah did i spell that right battlefield yeah uh yeah. i can't spell spelling is without me um let's get a little uh a little lyrical i like being lyrical Doubt coursed with aggressive intent until each of his limbs went numb. Yeah, yeah, all right, I like that. Doubt coursed. I don't want to use the word through, so but I think that still works. Doubt coursed. Yeah, because doubt coursed with aggressive intent until each because coursed is like through basically. So doubt coursed with aggressive intent until each of his limbs went numb slowing he tried to hold the appearance right because we he needs to appear brave of his will but allowed a few stronger than he to take position ahead of him i don't know if that makes sense slowing he tried to hold the appearance of his will uh Yeah, yeah, he allowed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, he allowed. Uh, those, those stronger than he to take position ahead. Of All right, I kind of like that. 
Uh, okay, so now, uh, now, let's see. Uh, yeah. Now, I know, it could, oh, by the way, I, it, it could definitely go different ways. Like, you know, these are just choices I'm making in real time. Um, also, you know, he could he could see his men getting beaten and find the confidence and bravery to push forward. And, you know, that would make him help his men, even though uh, they will probably end up losing and being taken prisoner. Right. Whatever the case may be. But that would be that would be the choice. Right. So he's afraid he's a coward. He's actually trying not to get there before everyone else. But then when he starts seeing his people being killed and them losing, he just rushes in. Right. I could also make it where, like, maybe he gets hurt. Maybe maybe uh, he gets hit hard, stabbed. And uh, then you can make it interesting where, like, as he's dying, he finds the courage to keep fighting. Uh, and then he faints uh, thinking he's, you know, he's going to die and he just dies in the mud. But then he wakes up in a cell and he's all bandaged, bandaged up and now he's a prisoner. Right. So you could do anything like that's the fun part about writing. You could just but that would challenge the situation, you know, like now how did I get out of cell and like he's wounded and like now his choices are limited to more mental and not necessarily physical because we know he's strong. So we just took away his strength uh, and his floor is that he's hurt. He's wounded. So now we have to see him make choices because he's being challenged in a situation and uh, he has to find that inner strength, right? And overcome it. Um, another thing I could do is I could just let him win. I, I could let him win instead of lose, like how I changed it in this scenario. Uh, but instead of him finding like, I don't want him to be brave. Like I, like I want to maintain his cowardice, right? So, um, one of his strengths could be that he's intelligent, right? So he's rec he can recognize that they're losing and maybe he could, uh, find, find some sort of, uh, strength within to command his men for counter actions or whatever, but like not necessarily like him becoming brave. So ba basically in a sense, his fear allowed him to not run in and die per se and fight the battle. He can't fight, even though he's strong physically. But it allows him to step back. His fear actually will. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to allow his fear to make him step back and see the bigger picture. So let's do that. Boop. Next. Okay. So. Uh, so the, the first passage is ultimately saying that they are approaching their feet away. Uh, and, you know, he led other people ahead of him. So now now Richard has to reach it. So reaching the bulk of the battle. Richard froze, right? Because he's afraid. With each clash of, let's get a little immersive here. Let's say metal against metal, screams of death and impalement. Ah, oh, yeah. The center, the center of the field became his future grave until. Let's do it. Let's say he's going to run away. So until his coward is tore him, right? Tore him away from the danger. Danger! And then let's say we got to do some processing here. So in his retreat, he fell up the hill, right? <laughs> We've done that before, right? Am I right? Falling up the stairs, trying to get to the bathroom. Uh, just me. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, in his retreat, he fell up the hill, turning onto his back to see the weakness in the enemy. All right. Uh, real quick, some might be saying, "Hey, see" is a filler word. Um, in this, this is an act. This is he's taking in. So instead of saying he sees the weakness, uh, or uh, he's watching. The army uh, reveal their weakness. This is more of like I'm using C as in uh, the, he's being informed the information. He's turning onto his back to see the weakness in the enemy. So that becomes less of a filter word. <laughs> Evil filter words. Uh, so after the anima, <laughs> the enemy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, now that he's on the ground, let's get him. Let's get. Uh, uh, his hand shivered, reaching 
<sighs> We're the closest soldier. Hmm. Ooh, hey, hey, man. See, I hate when it does that. Does your, I think I asked this on another video, but does your Googles do that? Does your Googles do that? See, all right, there we go. You see this? Like, I don't like that. Anyway, all right. His hand shivered, reaching for the closest soldier. Uh, split the army. Uh, send, send more. In retreat? Yes. Well, the other. Okay. Yeah. He jumped. Just like cannon fire. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. One half the army. Retreat one half the army. Well, the other uh, holds steady against the forces. My lord. My lord. But do it. Word for the others. To flank, flank them. Distraction. All right. I can't spare spelling. Okay. There you go. All right, here we go. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, Richard led the charge into battle. His mind conscious. His mind conscious of the distance between him and the coming soldiers ahead. He hesitated at the edge of the rushing line, now only feet from the battlefield. Doubt coursed with aggressive intent until each of his limbs went numb, slowing. He tried to hold the appearance of his will, yet he allowed those stronger than he to take position ahead of him. Reaching the bulk of the battle, Richard froze with each clash of metal against metal, screams of death and impalement. The center of the field became his future grave until his cowardice tore him away from the danger. In his retreat, he fell up the hill, turning onto his back to see the weakness in the army. His hand shivered, reaching for the closest soldier. Split the army! Send one in retreat while the other... He jumped, distracted by cannon fire. Yes, yes, retreat one half the army while the others hold steady against the forces. My lord, but we're losing. Do it! Send word for the others to flank them as our men sacrifice with their distraction. All right, there you go. Is that good? I don't know. What do you think? Is that good? I like it. Oh, God, me to that. All right, all right. I like that. So there you go. We uh, we created a scene in real time, just basing it off of we. I made choices. We challenge the characters all based on flaws and strengths. And we're seeing the show sometimes tell element of it playing out. We're seeing the, the cowardice of the leader, but also the intelligence of the leader. And I know this is probably just a very uh, standard kind of scene. You know, of course you have to flank your army. Anyway. All right. Well, maybe you want an exercise. So let's do it. Let's do an exercise. Exercise. What happened? Give me my give me my face. All right. Uh all right. So what you do is just basically what we did here. You know, think of your characters or whatever you're working on right now, and just kind of like read over it and see uh if things are happening, but nothing is happening. Um, are you challenging anything? Are characters making choices? Uh, are they winning? Are they failing? So that, that's the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go over whatever work you have, or you could even do a practice thing where you just kind of write out a plot and then you sort of build on it like we did today. Uh, look at your established work or whatever your uh, work in progress is. Uh, your whip. Um, and then uh, look at it and, you know, take some notes down. Go, are they getting through this easily? Uh is there any pushback? 
are they being challenged and be honest with yourself too you know like yes they might be accomplishing things but that doesn't always necessarily mean they're being challenged challenge is when they have to make choices to make things happen and not necessarily choices because the plot dictates it for example if two characters are in a situation and one character has to drink the poison sir and the other character's like no i'll drink it and then the other character's like okay and then the character drinks the poison and then they die so the other person doesn't die no one really got challenged there was choices but it was because the plot dictated it so stuff happened but nothing really happened however in that same scenario if somebody goes you can't take the point let me take it you have a whole life ahead of you no <clears throat> no you know uh, my kids will be in good hands in there but but uh, we need you alive. You're the only one that could go through this and accomplish what needs to accomplish. And then there's like pushback, like they're arguing positions. Now that becomes story. Anyway. So once you write down the strengths, the weaknesses, if they're being challenged, if anything's being challenged, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So first, first you go like, am I seeing any strengths or no strengths? Am I seeing any flaws or no flaws? Am I seeing any challenges or no challenges? Right. Um, but you also, once you do discover that there is a strength on the page, but maybe no flaws or vice versa, there's flaws, but no strengths. How can you challenge those things? Right. How can you create conflict to showcase show sometimes tell those particular strengths and or weaknesses? All right. Challenge, challenge, challenge. That's really the goal. When you realize what their strengths are, you can think about how those strengths can have some pushbacks. Always create pushbacks. Uh, you know, you want conflict. Conflict is so important. So, but anyway, so once you have this list, just sort of, uh, attack each thing specifically, think about like, how can I challenge them and how does that scene work out? And by the way, you could challenge challenges. You know, I ran out of bullets. I went through the wrong door. I, uh, now I have to wait until they run past or I got to defend myself while they break in. And now that's another situation or uh you know maybe it's a romance where it's like the challenge is uh i took them on a really romantic dinner but it turns out i ordered for them and they're allergic to freaking shellfish whatever the case may be right so there you go oh and also you want to try balancing it out you know like if there are too many strengths and not enough flaws you sort of want to kind of like bring some flaws up you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know bring it to the second level uh, and vice versa. If there's too many flaws, you kind of want to bring some strengths up. So keep a nice balance of things. All right. Final thoughts. Very quick. Creating compelling characters is at the heart of a great storyteller. And the key lies in the delicate balance between their strengths and flaws. It's in that push and pull where your character will come to life and become someone your reader can root for flaws and all when they see them making choices and having consequences good or bad it's not just about listing positive and negative traits no 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 no. see the magic happens when the traits interact creating internal conflict and driving characters growth that's right you don't want to just be like they are strong you want to be like well how do we what's their strength do when it interacts with the one of their weaknesses they might be strong they might be uh they might be super smart but naive right so they make dumb choices but they are highly intelligent and that's true because wisdom is a thing right so uh but when you compare when it comes off that your characters are too perfect they usually become unrelatable it's the flaws that make your characters human and allow readers to connect with them on a deeper level so you want to aim for characters that feel like real people in a way where they have layers contradictions and the capacity to surprise both the reader and themselves right so push them to their limits and then make them make choices have them fail but then succeed at some point or not succeed it's up to you when it comes to the page and working out scenes, instead of listing their traits, demonstrate your character's strengths and flaws through their actions, decisions, behaviors, and interactions with others. To create these compelling characters is going to be an ongoing process. It's not just about the initial character design, but how these traits play out across your entire narrative. As you write, you may, and most likely, will discover new facets of your characters, new strengths or flaws that emerge organically from the storytelling process. The goal isn't to create perfect characters, but to create characters 
perfect for your story. Flaws, strengths, and all the messy humanity in between. These are the characters that will stay with your readers long after they finish the last page. So ultimately, you want to push your characters to their limits, challenge them, challenge their strengths, force them to confront their flaws. And, well, more importantly, it's in these moments of tension and growth that your characters and your story will truly indeed come alive. All right. Next video in this series. We are going to talk about character relationships, how connections shape personalities. Basically, uh, exploring how other characters can influence characters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, like what you saw today? Well, you know, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out. Uh, if you found this uh, information helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. You know, it really does help uh, help the channel grow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, all right, there we go. Boom! I had a lot of fun with that. As always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Woo! Oh, yeah.